we are dealing about the terminology that is re related to the bone okay so see there are the various region okay in bone you may see okay either you may see the some elevated portion or depressed portion or openings anything you can see okay now if you are seeing the elevation means see you may see the elevation in form of line so they are the linear elevation sometimes you may just see the elevation irregular shape elevation in the bone they are the irregular elevation sometimes you will see the slightly smooth or round type of elevation okay but that will not be so much smooth rounded type of elevation you may see okay that is the rounded elevation okay so see here the irregular elevation in the bone see the this irregular elevation they are named as tuberosity tuber colitic condyle trochanter malleolus or ramus okay so see either they are called as the tuberosity or they are called as the tubercle or they are called as the epicondyle or trochanter or malleolus or ramus means this all thing means same they denote the irregular elevation in the bone okay in some bone they have got a different name like in some bone they have got a name tuberosity in some bone ramus in some bone malleolus like that okay now see i'll give one one example for this okay so you will see the tuberosity in tibia also you will see the tuberosity in the ilium also okay in ilium bone also there is the iliac tuberosity is there okay so see now here i am telling about this uh tuberosity in the tibia here see in the tibia just i will make this zoom okay now see in the tibia in the upper end you, you will see the bony prominence in the anterior aspect okay so this is the tibia tuberosity this is the irregular elevation in the tibia it has got a name tuberosity that is in tibia so it is the tibial tuberosity so similarly tuberosity you will see in the ischium also ischium of the hip bone it has got a name ischial tuberosity okay ischial tuberosity not iliac tuberosity okay that was my mistake only in ischium you will see the tuberosity that is the ischial tuberosity okay if hip bone picture is there i will show you that ischial tuberosity so in the tibia that is the tibial tuberosity similarly some elevation it has got a name tubercle okay so that you, if you see the upper end of the humerus bone you will see the two tubercle can you see this bony elevation in this side and this elevation in the next side so it is the large one and it is the small one okay in comparing if you are doing, doing the comparison between these two so see this is the larger one larger elevation this is the small so it has got a name now tubercle so larger one is the greater tubercle smaller one this is the lesser tubercle so in humerus they have got a name tubercle okay similarly the irregular elevation is named as epicondyle so see if you see the lower end of the femur bone you will see the irregular elevation in the form of epicondyle so two epicondyle they are the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle so they again represents the irregular elevation in the bone okay so this is the epicondyle this is the not this okay this one this elevated portion and this portion they are the irregular elevation this is the smooth elevation it has got a next name that is condyle okay they are the articular surface don't get confused with condyle and epicondyle okay so epicondyle they are the irregular elevation but condyle they are the smooth articular elevation articular surface okay articular means they are going to make the joint okay so don't get confused with epicondyle and the condyle so medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle they are the irregular elevation some bone they have got a name trochanter if you see the upper end of the femur bone you will see two bony elevation one larger one smaller see one elevation is here some large elevation is here so they have got a name trochanter greater trochanter the larger one is the greater trochanter the smaller one is the lesser trochanter now in some bone they have bony elevation they have got a name malleolus so this malleolus you will see in the lower end of the tibia and the lower end of the fibula okay so here see in the tibia bone the lower end there is the prolongation of the lower bone in form of medial malleolus similarly in case of fibula this is the lateral malleolus so this lateral and medial malleolus you can feel your own ankle joint also just you put your hand here you will see the two bulb bulb on the either side okay 
prominence you will feel in the lower in the, in the ankle joint okay these two elevation bony elevation or bony prominence on the either side of the ankle joint they are the malleolus only the medial side that is formed by the tibia and the lateral side that is by the fibula so medial one is the medial malleolus lateral one is the lateral malleolus next one is the ramus that is a, again the irregular elevation but if the ele elevation is in the form of flat if flat irregular elevation is there that is the ramus so you will see the ramus of mandible here can you see this wide elevation this is the ramus of mandible but this is the process this process is sharp elevation that is different okay see this is the coronoid process this is the sharp elevation okay this is not irregular elevation this is the sharp coronoid process sharp elevation condylar process this is the sharp elevation that is sharp elevation different but we are reading the irregular elevation this portion this is the ramus of mandible this is the irregular elevation okay so this is about the irregular elevation now we will go for the so next elevation that is the rounded elevation if elevation is in form of round okay but they are again irregular they are not smooth okay if they are in the round shape ball shape so they are the rounded elevation you so they may have got an eminence or protuberance okay so you will see the frontal eminence on the either side of the frontal bone they are the frontal eminence you will see the parietal eminence on the either side of the cranial wall outside okay this parietal bone in the parietal bone you will see the parietal eminence similarly the rounded elevation it may have got a name protuberance in the occipital bone you will see the external occipital protuberance outside and the internal occipital protuberance inside this is the external occipital protuberance but see from here there is the linear elevation is there on the either side they are the knuckle lines okay so this is the inferior knuckle line and this is the superior knuckle line and see from the protuberance there is the again the linear elevation running downward towards the foramen magnum so this is the crest so external occipital crest so this part has got a line also crest also and the protuberance also see so this is the external occipital protuberance from here on the either side there is the linear elevation they are the superior knuckle line and this is one is the inferior knuckle line and from the external occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum there is the bony ridge that is the external occipital crest okay so but see this is the rounded elevation okay so this is about the elevation now sharp elevation already over the spine spine process corno hor hamulus that is already over isn't it if the bony elevation is in form of pointed shape then they are the process either they have got a name process or they have got a name corno or hor or hamulus so process you will find in the vertebra that is the spinous process you will see in the lower end of the radius you will see the staloid process in the radius in the lower end of the ulna also you will see the staloid process okay staloid process of radius staloid process of ulna similarly you will see the one more staloid process in the temporal bone see this is the needle like projection this is the staloid process of the temporal bone even you will see the nipple like projection in the temporal bone here you can feel this behind the ear you can feel the bony prominence here so this is the mastoid process so they are the nipple like projection they are the mastoid process so sharp elevation they have got a name process or spine okay now corno and horn they are also the sharp elevation in hyoid bone you will see the two elevation see sharp pointed elevation larger one is the greater horn small one is the lesser horn similarly hamulus is also the sharp elevation see in case of the petrol in case of the pterygoid play process of the spinoid bone you will see the pterygoid hamulus this is the pterygoid hamulus see this pointed see this point this is the pterygoid hamulus okay and the process this is the vaginal process see the sharp elevation on the either side this is the vaginal process so this is this is not process okay this one so this is the rostrum actually so this small one on the either side this is the vaginal process so the sharp elevation they have got a name either spine process or or hamulus okay this is already over for you now we will go for the openings okay now see for the openings see 
in bone there may be the openings or hole is there or so this hole they have got a name different name they according to the different bone they have got okay so either they are named as foramen or canal or fissure or meatus or canaliculus or hiatus or aquata these all represents the opening in the bone okay see one opening you can see here see you can see one more opening here you can see one opening here here opening you can see here also you can see the opening here also you can see the opening here you can see the opening here you can see the opening these all are the like they are the opening communicating channels okay so these are the opening so these openings they have got a different name okay some opening are named as foramen some named as canal some may, may be named as fissure some may be named as meatus some may be named as canaliculus some is named as hiatus or, and some may be named as aquata now we will see the foramen here see you will see the one last foramen in the occipital bone okay from where the medulla come out and come continue as the spinal cord so this is the opening this opening is named as foramen the name of this foramen is foramen magnum so see this is the foramen this opening has got better name foramen okay now see other foramen are also there here but see this see if you see this this is not a foramen so this opening it has got a name canal so this opening is the carotid canal okay so they are the opening only but name may be different in the different bone okay are you getting at least one of you make your audio on yes sir okay at least you should say are you listening or not na so one of you make the audio on okay keep it on only so either foramen or canal see you will see here the foramen lacerum there are also the openings foramen lacerum is here so this is the external opening of carotid canal internal opening of carotid canal is somewhere here in the wall of foramen lacerum this opening is the foramen lacerum okay so here is the next foramen this is the foramen ovel so the opening they have got a name either foramen or canal you have seen the canal and foramen okay this is the canal carotid canal carotid canal so this is the jugular foramen here now again foramen jugular foramen this is the foramen magnum now one more opening you will see here can you see this opening here on the either side this is the meatus now the name of this opening is external acoustic meatus see meatus is here so this also represent the meatus can you see in the ear opening can you see in the ear so this is the meatus so that is the it has got the two parts only part is the cartilaginous part is there. outside is the cartilaginous okay if you go further inside there is the bony portion this same thing same only this is the continuation of the same only so this is the external acoustic meatus okay so you will see the internal acoustic meatus also inside you have to break this okay petrous part of temporal bone okay you have to break that bone and you can see so this is the external acoustic meatus so see foramen you have seen canal you have seen fissures and fissures you have seen also you meatus you have seen okay now canaliculus hiatus aquata you will see in next picture this is okay opening foramen and canal yes sir okay then now see here can you see in this picture this is the interior of the skull bone or the base uh, interior or the floor of the cranial cavity so this floor of the cranial cavity see you will see the various foramen you will see here see here the minor small small foramen you will see so they are the olfactory foramen okay small foramen they are again the opening foramen now one more see here is the opening okay this middle cranial fossa will communicate with the orbit okay make your video on so that you can see me i think so see here orbit orbital cavity is here so from this foramen from this opening one nerve will pass that is the optic nerve so this opening this is the optic canal so this optic canal will pass open into the orbital cavity see here this is the optic canal now see some opening in the bone they have got a name of fissures now you want to see the fissures see here you will see the fissures in the orbital cavity one two fissures you will see one this is the superior orbital fissure this is the inferior orbital fissure see if you see want to see the same fissures in the base of the skull this is the here you can see the superior orbital fissure so this fissures from here if you put wire then it will come from here 
so this is our vital cavity okay so some nerves and vessels will passes from this, this fissures okay so this is the optic canal this is the fissure superior orbital and inferior orbital fissure now fissures you have seen here now see here i have told you the internal acoustic meters now you will see here internal acoustic meters here okay so they from the internal acoustic meters nerve will pass and artery will pass there the facial nerve and vestibular cochlear nerve will pass from this foramen and along with the labyrinthine vessels will pass from this meters that is the opening okay so they are the meters foramen okay canals okay okay are you getting yes, so here intraorbital foramen means opening means either foramen canal tube okay depend upon the bone or reason they have got a different name only but they represents the opening just you remember this thing now see here we will see some canaliculi hiatus you have already seen now canaliculus we will see here aqueduct we will see here now can you see here the cochlear canaliculus here can you see here here see this is the cochlear canaliculus okay so here this is the aqueduct vestibular aqueduct okay so see actually see while reading the inner ear you will come to know about this cochlear canaliculi and the vestibular aqueduct actually see this vestibular aqueduct see if you see the inner ear you have got the two headings that is bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth okay see here this aqueduct i want to say i mean to say about the bony labyrinth here so bony labyrinth see in inner ear you will see the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth membrane bony labyrinth means the canal within the bone or that is a petrous part of the temporal bone you will see some canal and in that bony labyrinth inside there will find the this yellow bluish color structure see this is the membranous labyrinth this white is channel cavity that is the bony labyrinth inside which there is the membranous labyrinth is there okay now just you forget this blue color there will be the tube isn't it opening will be there so this opening that is the vestibular aqueduct here so through the vestibular aqueduct there is a passes of endolymphatic duct or ductus endolymphaticus okay that ductus endolymphaticus it will it will open into the endolymphatic sac okay so this endolymphatic sac does lie below the dura mater okay so subdural space it lies up in the subdural space but the see this next one this is the canaliculus okay this canaliculus see through this canaliculus the perilymph the perilymph will drain into the subarachnoid space so there is the communication between the subarachnoid space and the, this uh, this is the scala tympani and the scala vestibuli of the cochlear canal okay so through this cochlear cochlear canaliculi there is the communication between the perilymph and the subarachnoid space there is the csf is there so this is the tube connection okay so this is the canaliculus so canaliculus cochlear canaliculus is there and the aqueduct vestibular aqueduct is there you can see here also see vestibular aqueduct so here you can see the cochlear canaliculus okay are you getting so see hiatus of the facial canal you can see here so hiatus of the facial canal you, you will see so hiatus is opening only canaliculus also opening uh, then aqueduct is also opening foramen also opening can canal also opening okay then depression is already over na for you okay depression already over so they are the depressed region on the bony surface either they have got a name fossa phobia group no chinchisura sulcus and feet this is already over i know now so this this is the south see granular pits this is due to the arachnoid granulations okay so that is already over for you now we will go for the next terminology cavity so see in some in bone you will find the some space you will find okay so that space they have got a name cavity okay the large space within the bone or enclosed by the bone that is the cavity okay so see this cavity they have got a name either cavity or cell or sinus or antrum that means same thing 
they are the bony cavities form form by the bone okay so see you will see the orbital cavity here okay orbital cavity will see here see you will see the sinus here that is the maxillary sinus that is the bony cavity within the maxilla maxillary sinus you will see the ethmoidal sinus within the ethmoid bone you will see similarly you will see the frontal sinus here here the frontal sinus within the frontal bone you will see similarly you will see the sphenoidal sinus in the sphenoid bone body of sphenoid bone that is the sphenoidal sinus that is again the cavity within the bone okay now see cell and antrum see if you see here the see this is this is the tympanic cavity this is the medullary cavity so this is the tympanic cavity see again it is a cavity tympanum so our ear is divided into external ear middle ear cavity and the inner ear isn't it so this is the middle ear cavity okay this middle ear cavity that is the bony cavity only so this is cavity it has got an empty panum so the middle ear cavity you see it will communicate with the mastoid ear cells see this blue color they are the mastoid ear cells they are again the cavity within the mastoid process okay mastoid this is the mastoid process that is the part of temporal bone only so the temporal bone only so see these are the minor small cells if cavity is small they are known as cell if cavity is large they have got a name antrum or cavity okay so see this is the larger cavity that has got a name antrum mastoid antrum okay are you getting so see one more opening on the bone that is the stygian tube initially there was the opening now one heading in the opening there was the tube so this is the opening now this is the stygian tube this is not cavity this is the stygian tube the opening has got a name tube also so stygian tube so these all sinus and drum cell cavity they represents the bone space within the bone okay so they are the space so they are named as a cavity if large is there they are named as a cavity and drum so if they are slightly small they are sinus and more smaller than they are known as cell okay so they are the very small cavity they are the cell okay now i'll go for the next now in the bone you will see the elevation bark or the surface of the bone which is articular surface of the bone smooth surface of the bone they have got a name different name either they have got a name facets condyle head capitulum or trochlea so this terminology this represents the smooth surface on the bone if the surface of bone are smooth and this surface is going to articular means articular means the surface that is going to make the joint okay so if this articular surface is there they are smooth area so this is smooth area they have got a different name okay some smooth area some articular area they have got a name facet some articular area they have got a name condyle some articular area or smooth surface they have got a name capitulum some has got a name head some have got a name trochlea so this is smooth that denotes the articular area only okay smooth articular area okay so they are the articular area now see this articular area this smooth articular surface they have got a name facets see if you see the sternum on the either side of the sternum you will see the facets so this facets there in this facet there is the attachment of the postal cartilage okay the postal cartilage through the postal cartilage the ribs will articulate with the sternum here so see here see this is the one facet or articular surface for the clavicle so this is the articular surface for the first rib see this is the sternal angle at the level of sternal angle there is the articular surface for the second rib so they are the facets so this articular surface it has got a name facets okay so they are the articular facets similarly you will see smooth articular area okay so this smooth articular area so depending upon the bone it has got a different name okay so some are known as facets see one example for the facets see you will see in the sternum so they have it bears the articular facet for the postal cartilage okay similarly you will see the facets on the 
whatever also see in the whatever there is the superior articular process it be as the superior articular facet and the inferior articular process that be as the inferior articular facets in almost all vertebra so in case of thoracic vertebra whatever you will see the articular facet for the ribs in the body of vertebra okay so they are all denotes the articular area that where the next bone will join together to form the joint okay so articular means the area they take part in formation of the joint okay so this is the one articular surface next articular surface they are making joint here okay so smooth articular area they have got a name facet maybe facet now next is the condyle now see here now for the condyle i'll go for the previous picture okay here also you can see actually here okay so they are the condyles of the tibia okay two condyle you can see here this two condyle of the tibia medial and the lateral condyle of the tibia they take part in formation of knee joint knee joint see the two condyle of the femur and the two condyle of the tibia they will articulate together to form the knee joint so they are the condyle of the tibia so this condyle they are the articular surface only so medial with articulate with the medial condyle of the femur at the lower end of the femur and where as the lateral condyle of the tibia articulate with the lateral condyle of the femur okay so they forms the knee joint so the condyles they are the articular surface again some articular surface they have got a name head now you can see here this is the round like spherical shape so it has got a name head so if they are having the spherical shape or segment of the sphere they have got a name head so this is the head of humor similarly there is the head of femur also let me so so you this head <clears throat> see here see this is the femur one upper end of the femur bone this is the head of femur so this is the humerus bone this is the head of humerus okay see these are the epicondyle they are the irregular elevation but see this is the condyle so these are the smooth articular surface so they are the condyle they are the condyle of femur bone so lateral condyle of femur this is the lateral condyle of femur medial condyle of femur okay at the lower end this is the picture of lower end of the femur so lateral condyle medial condyle they are the smooth articular surface lateral epicondyle medial epicondyle they are the irregular elevations in the bone okay now the some they have got a name capitulum <coughs> capitulum also the uh, the meaning of capitulum is head so see if you see here in the lower end of the humerus in the anterior aspect so you will see the circular articular surface this is the capitulum of the humor humerus okay so humerus bone it has got a capitulum in the lower end okay so laterally is the capitulum but medially there, there is the one more smooth articular surface it has got a name trochlea so this is the trochlea humerus okay so this capitulum will articulate with the articulate with the radius whereas this trochlea it will articulate with the trochlear surface of the ulna to make the this joint what is the name of this joint elbow joint so this is the capitulum and this one is the trochlea the meaning of trochlea is like fully like okay if you see the humerus bone in the lower end you will see like fully like articular surface that is the trochlea of humerus and capitulum the meaning of capitulum is head okay rounded structure that is the capitulum so in the head of in the lower end of the humerus you will see the capitulum okay so these are about the smooth articular area and they may have got a different name on the different according to the different bone okay so these all represent the articular areas okay now we will see the components of the human body see see the microscopic component from cell and the complex organism is the human body see so the see cell what is cell so they are the terminology you have to know about this thing also okay so cell this is the what is cell anyone what 
What is sales? Bhavana Vatta. Uh, so sales is the uh, functional unit of life. Okay, functional unit of life. Radha, what is sales? Structural and functional unit of life. Uh, structural and function. See, she had missed the structural. Okay, you have to take that also. 